It says ballot title, amendment to limit government interference with abortion. Ballot summary, no law shall prohibit, penalize, delay, or restrict abortion before viability when necessary to protect the patient's health as determined by the patient's health care provider. This amendment does not change the legislator's constitutional authority to require notification to a pay, parent or guardian before a minor has an abortion. Also, you're still required to notify a parent's parent or guardian, a child's parent or guardian, if they are a minor. With that being said, Ron DeSantis is lying to you. Plus, they also don't talk about atopic pregnancies and how that could be, you know, damaging to the life of the mother. Now, you and I both know that the abortion debate is a very hotly contested debate, whether you're liberal or conservative. Um, a lot of people are uh, kind of up in the air, kind of uh, agnostic to which side of the debate that they stand on. But one thing can be clear. There are a lot of people who also believe that, well, we should have some measures when it comes to it. And if you feel that way, what measures do you feel are significant? Should it be six weeks? Should it be 15 weeks? Should it be 24 weeks? Should it be 36 weeks? What, how many weeks do you feel should be sufficient for uh, somebody? If they want to terminate a pregnancy, they should be able to do so. Because the thing is, is like sometimes... These things are necessary for health reasons or otherwise, right? Whatever you believe, there is a ballot initiative that's going to be on the ballot for this November regarding abortions. And this is going to be Amendment 4. So let's get into Amendment 4. We're going to see exactly what it is, what it contains, who supports it, who doesn't support it, and what the language means so that you guys will be informed about what's going on in this ballot initiative series. So here is the Florida Amendment 4 Right to Abortion Initiative. So it says a yes vote supports establishing a constitutional right to abortion before fetal viability. A no vote opposes establishing a constitutional right to abortion before fetal viability. So of course, you need a 60% supermajority vote required for approval for the amendment. This is going to be, just to let you guys know, for all the ballot initiatives here in Florida, we need 60%. In your state, prospective state, it could be different, okay? You may just need 51%. It depends, right, on the laws that your state has. Now, let's continue. It says, as of August 24th, 2024, 11 statewide ballot measures related to abortion were certified in Arizona, Colorado, Florida, Maryland, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, New York, Nevada, and South Dakota for the general election ballot of 2024. This is the most on record for a single year. You can find a list of 2024 certified proposed measures here. Okay, so here's the overview. What would the initiative do? It says the initiative will provide a constitutional right to abortion before fetal viability or when necessary to protect the patient's health as determined by the patient's health care provider. The following language would be added to the state constitution. Quote, except as provided in Article 10, Section 22, no law shall prohibit, penalize, delay, or restrict abortion before viability or when necessary to protect the patient's health as determined by the patient's health care provider. The initiative would not change the state's legislator's authority to enact law requiring the parents of a minor to be notified if their child is seeking an abortion, with exceptions that can be attained through judicial waiver. So, um, So when it comes to viability, right, because people, some people may not know when a, uh, a fetus is viable or a pregnancy is viable, right, 
Um, so I would just want to share this first because a lot of us men, we don't know this information, right? Um, in particular, because we don't have uteruses, you know, those us cis men, we don't have uteruses. So just to give you guys a bit of an overview of what viability is, here it is, okay? So this is from the NHS. It says, by the time you are 24 weeks pregnant, the baby has a chance of survival if they are born. Most babies born before this time cannot live because their lungs and their vital organs are not built enough. The care that can now be given by given the care can, that can now be given in baby neonatal units means more and more babies born early do survive. Now, the thing is, is that you have to be viability is 24 weeks. Before that, it is not viable. So they essentially can't be saved if they're outside of the womb. The thing is, is most women do not know they're pregnant until six weeks in because they have their monthly cycle, typically every 28 days. 28 days was four weeks. So they're typically waiting for their cycle around that time within those six weeks. And once they miss their cycle, which is supposed to happen after 28 days, guess what? Oh, I missed my period. I might be pregnant. And so if they miss their period and they might be pregnant, guess what? They find that out six weeks later. So people who are saying, oh, we should have a six-week ban, you're basically making it so that anybody who, right when they find out they're pregnant, it's already too late. Too late. And then, even if you did 15 weeks or so, like somebody like Donald Trump wants to do, 15 some people, you know, when it comes to getting an abortion, you have to make appointments. You may have to wait a long time. Some people may not have the ability to get to a clinic in that much time. So time's ticking, right? So unfortunately, you know, is it reasonable to do it within that amount of time. And also, this isn't late term abortion. Pregnancies are 39 weeks. Yeah. 24 weeks. You know, 24 weeks is six months. That's how long it takes for a fetus to be viable. It takes a long time. It takes longer for a fetus to be viable than it is uh, the, the viability period between, uh, you know, a fetus, you know, being viable and, ha and being born. So just to give you guys a little bit of a background about viability. All right. So. Let's go back into the article. So, who's behind the campaign surrounding the initiative? So, Florida's protecting freedom. Uh, so, we'll get into that in a little bit. It says five committees registered. You see, uh, what is the status of the history of abortion in Florida? So, on April 1st, it says Florida Supreme Court ruled that the Constitution's right to privacy does not include the right to abortion, overturning a previous decision by the court in 1989, finding that the privacy clause did include a right to abortion. The ruling allowed the state's 15-week abortion ban passed by the legislator in 2022 to take effect. In 2023, the legislator passed another bill known as the Heartbeat Protection Act 
to ban abortion at six weeks, which was contingent on the state Supreme Court overturning its prior ruling and allowing 15 week ban to take effect. The six week ban took effect on May 1st. Before 2022, abortions were legal in Florida until 24 weeks. So essentially, via ballot initiative, we're going back to the way we were. That's essentially what we're doing. All right. So in 2012, uh, voters rejected an amendment limiting public funds for abortions. And in 2004, they approved parental notification for minors seeking abortion. It says what states have decided on abortion ballot measures recently? So in 2022, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled Dobbs versus Jackson Women Health Organization that there is no federal constitutional right to abortion and overturn Roe v. Wade, effectively returning abortion policy decisions to the states. Since 2022, seven ballot measures addressing abortion have been on the ballot with 2022 having the highest number of abortion ballot measures on records in a single year, four measures in Vermont, Michigan, California in 2022 and Ohio in 2023 were sponsored by campaigns that described themselves as pro-choice and created state constitutional rights to abortion. All four measures were approved. Three measures in Kansas, Kentucky, and Montana were sponsored by campaigns describing themselves as pro-life and were designed explicitly to provide that there's no right to abortion in the state constitution. All three were defeated. So states set to have abortion on the ballot in 2024. You have Arizona, Colorado, Florida, Maryland, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska. Uh, so there's two in Nebraska. Um, says prohibit abortions after the first trimester and then right to abortion initiative. Uh, New York, so this one's interesting. It says add language to the New York Bill of Rights to include people cannot be denied rights based on their ethnicity, national origin, age, disability, or sex. Sex, including sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, pregnancy, pregnancy outcomes, and per reproductive health and autonomy. Uh, you have Nevada and South Dakota. Okay. So <clears throat> the potential impact. Uh, says the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, the DCCC uh, representative said, this is a serious blow for anti-abortion extremists. Uh, there's no question that uh, when abortion rights are on the ballot, Democrats, Republicans, and independents like turn out to vote for, to protect their freedoms. Uh, Fentress uh, Driscoll, the Democratic minority leader in the Florida House says, I do believe House seats are winnable for Democrats, and I believe they're winnable, I think, the ballot initiative really helps us. So these are just some of the people who are speaking out about it. Uh, here is let me go to Donald Trump. He said Florida is probably maybe going to change. Also, see, it is all what. It will, the will of the people. I can't read what he says sometimes. This is what I've been saying. It's a perfect system. So for 50, 52 years, people have wanted to end Roe v. Wade and get it back to the States. We did that. It's an incredible thing, an incredible achievement. We did that. <laughs> and now the States have it. And the States are putting it out the way they want. It's the will of the people. So Florida probably is going to change. Arizona is going to definitely change. Everybody wants that to happen and you're getting the will of the people. It's been pretty amazing. Oh my gosh. And then here's Ron Santos says, Joe Biden is coming down to try to support a constitutional amendment that will mandate abortion up to the moment of birth. This is a lie. It is a lie. It is not until the moment of birth. It is until it is viable, which is 24 weeks. 23 to 24 weeks. A birth does not happen typically until 39 weeks. 24 is not the same as 39. So that being said, Ron DeSantis is lying to you. All right, let's continue.
Uh, he says that will eliminate parental consent for minors. And that's written in a way that is intentionally designed to see voters. So I can tell you that Florida Floridians are not buying what Joe Biden is selling. And in November, we're going to play instrumental role in sending him back to Delaware, where he belongs. Um, so, yeah, when they say that is to is going to allow abortion up to right before birth, that is a lie. So whenever somebody says that they're lying. It's uh, it's for viability up to 24 weeks. Uh, let me see. It says ballot title amendment to limit government interference with abortion. Ballot summary: No law shall prohibit, penalize, delay, or restrict abortion before viability, when necessary, to protect the patient's health, as determined by the patient's healthcare provider. This amendment does not change the legislator's constitutional authority to require notification to a pay parent or guardian before a minor has an abortion. Also, you're still required to notify a parent's parent or guardian, a child's parent or guardian, if they are a minor. With that being said, Ron DeSantis is lying to you. Plus, they also don't talk about atopic pregnancies and how that could be, you know, damaging to the life of the mother or the parent, I should say. Uh, it says financial impact. Um, amendment to limit government interference with abortion says the proposed amendment will result in significantly more abortions and fewer live births per year in Florida. The increase on abortions could be even greater in if the amendment invalidates laws requiring parental consent before minors undergo abortions and those ensuring only licensed physicians perform abortions. There are also uncertainty about whether the amendment will require the states to subsidize abortions with public funds, litigation to resolve those, and other uncertainties will require an additional cost to the state government and state courts that will never negatively impact the state budget. An increase in abortions will negatively affect the growth of state and local revenues over time because the fiscal impact of increased abortions on state and local government and costs cannot be estimated with precision. The total impact of the proposed amendment is indeterminate, meaning less people born mean less people pay taxes. Less people born means less people workers. Ultimately, this is about increasing the workforce. That's ultimately what it's about. If you really want to get really right down to it, it's about increasing the amount of workers that people have. But the thing is, it's like you're not actually taking care of your workers, you're exploiting them. So it's actually continuing the increase of exploitable people and preventing people who don't want to have a pregnancy or it's dangerous for them to have a pregnancy, then it's like, well, no, we're going to force you no matter what so that we can have that worker to exploit so that we can actually have more money either for the state, for the state taxes, or we can have more people to exploit in our corporations. That's ultimately what it's about. That's why they're saying, oh, we'll be making less money if more people start having abortions. And the thing is, it's like if somebody wants to have them, the problem is, is that <laughs> it's going to happen. But it's going to happen either dangerously for somebody or it's not. And the problem is, is that if you, I'm not even going to get into the, the, the morality of it. Because if I do, then I'm going to have a bunch of hate comments. But that's ultimately what it's about. It's about the finances of the state. It's not actually an argument about the life. Uh, see, so of course, supporters are Joe Biden, uh, Federico Wilson, uh, Lauren Book, Jason Pizzo. Uh, you have at CIU Union, eleven ninety nine. Uh, they are in, you know, endorsing it. ACLU. Uh, Faith and Public Life Action, Florida Rising, Florida Women's Freedom Coalition, 
League of Women Voters in Florida, Men for Choice, Planned Parenthood of Southwest and Central Florida, The Fairness Project, Think Big America and Women's Voices of Southwest Florida. Uh, so faith leaders, of course, are in favor of this. Um, so yes, you have Joe Biden, uh, Floridians protecting freedom, uh, says overwhelmingly majority of Floridians think we should have the freedom to make our own personal health care decisions without interference from politicians. Despite that, politicians in Florida just signed the most extreme abortion ban in this nation. It bans abortion before most people can even realize they are pregnant. Here's the funny part about this. A lot of times people will talk about their body, their choice, especially when it comes to the pandemic. And they'll talk about, well, I, you know, I want to be able to and you know, put this over my face. You know, I got to be careful what I say. Um, I can choose to not have it, right? My body, my choice. But when it comes to the pregnancy, they're, they completely renege on it. The funny part is, is that um, they'll talk about, well, it's life, but at the same time, these are the same people that will destroy life on a daily basis. I mean, aren't viruses a life? Aren't germs a life? Anywho, um, I'm being facetious, but the thing is, is like, If you really believe in your body, your choice, I don't know. It's like, um, this is a lot to go through because this is a very, okay. So here's the opponents, uh, Rick Scott, of course, DeSantis, Ashley B. Moody, and the organizations are Florida Conference for Catholic Bishops. It's funny. You know, it's funny to me. It's the Florida Conference of Catholic Bishops, yet it was Catholics that actually performed abortions back in the day. <laughs> they actually performed abortions in the past. And I'm not talking about like hundreds of years ago. I'm talking about like 1940s, 1950s. They were, they were performing abortions Catholics were. So it's kind of weird to me. Um, so form of Florida Family Action, uh, Florida Family Policy Council, Florida Right to Life, National Center for Life and Liberty, Priest for Life, and Susan B. Anthony, Pro-Life America. So yeah. Um, so Florida Family Action, they're lying to you here. It says the sponsors of this bill this extreme amendment wants to legalize abortion up to the moment of birth and still repeal all limitations and regulations on abortion, even safety regulations that protect women because they want to make Florida the home of state of late term abortions in the Southeast. Like I said, it's up to viability, which is 24 weeks. It says just as one example, so, uh, how misleading this initiative is. The initiative creates right to abortion through viability. The sponsor has gone so far as attempting to deceive Floridians as to not post any information on its website on what that means by viability and when is the right to abortion, which the attempt to enshrine in our constitution ends. When I personally would not vote for is an initiative, no matter what the definition of viability it was using. I know that to some voters, this is material to their vote whether you're talking about abortion in the first trimester or at the end of the second trimester. Here's the thing. Um, I literally just Googled what viability was and I showed you guys. Like, it's like, what does viability mean? All right, well, just Google it. Like, it is not that hard. Ashley Moody is basically saying that the constituents are too stupid to actually Google what viability means. See how they play it in your face? <laughs> oh, Lord. Anyway, so everybody got something to say on this because everybody, you know, has an opinion. Right. So here's the campaign finance, of course, millions of dollars. Uh, 
so the support is way more than the oppose, right? It's more of an uphill battle, especially here in Florida. So, yeah, you have also the uh, the donors for these for the support in the opposition. Florida voters against extremism. Are they going up against the KKK and saying that's extremism too? Anyway, uh, of course, here's your donors. So of course, you know, when you, when it comes to talking about this, um, when it comes to this subject, this is a very hotly contested subject. And so some people, you know, um, have their opinions, you know, when it comes to abortion, things like that. I have my opinions and uh, I largely keep them to myself as a man. You know what I say? Look, if you got a uterus, that's for you to determine, not me. Uh, uh, so here are state abortion restrictions based on stage of pregnancy. Um, so it says, does the, does the state restrict abortion after a specific point in pregnancy? Um, of Alabama says, yes, you are not allowed to have one past conception, meaning the moment you get pregnant, you're banned. So yeah, Connecticut and Delaware are fetal viability. Um, Florida and Georgia is six weeks post fertilization. And remember I said, most people who are pregnant do not know that they're pregnant until six weeks. So by the time you realize it, you're just finding it out. And now you're banned. Kansas is 20 weeks since last menstrual period. Kentucky and Louisiana says con uh, since conception. Massachusetts is 24 weeks post fertilization. You know what's funny? I don't see any 39 weeks. And third trimester since last menstrual period, you might as well say fetal viability for the most part. But I don't see anything after 24 weeks. Nothing. I don't see anything. So when people are like, oh my God, they're going to be doing late-term abortions up to point of birth. They're lying to you. They're lying to you. There's nothing in this country. I have never heard of a 39-week abortion. I've heard of stillborn, right? I, I've heard, you know, of miscarriages. But no, no. So when people talk about, oh my God, they're trying to do late term abortions, late term being, uh, you know, third trimester, and they're trying to just, you know, by the time you hit your third trimester, you're trying to have a kid. You just are. You're trying to have a kid. You're allowing that to happen. Right. By the time you hit the third trimester, you're not trying to get rid of that kid. You know what I'm saying? You know, the people who are needing to abort are typically by the time they find out. So once you're six weeks, you really have 18 weeks before viability, 18 weeks.
but yeah, so let me finish this off. So this goes over the history of abortion measures. There's a lot of great information in here. Um, so as far as um, finding out about the history of you know abortion initiatives um, across the country, you can go here. And so ultimately, um on for, amendment four i'll be voting yes because well as far as uh you know as far as my opinion i leave it up to i leave it up to the people who have uteruses essentially because <laughs> it's like you know it's like if you don't want to have abortion don't have one but anyway, um, let me, and so that's basically it. So thank you so very much for watching my channel and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.